In this video, we'll be going over how to create this wood planks material for the holiday cabin project. So to begin, we're just gonna make a new substance graph. We're gonna go with the metallic roughness template and name it dark wood planks. And the first thing I usually do is start with the base material nodes so that we can keep things clean and connect our maps as we go along. Then let's just save the substance. With that out of the way, let's start with the big shapes first, aka our planks. For shapes like this, I prefer doing them in a separate graph that I can just import into the main one, so let's make a new empty graph. Then add in a tile generator and set the x amount to 5 and our y amount to 1. To add a bit of variation to this, let's add in a gradient linear 1, dial up now with the histogram range, and then connect that to our pattern input. Then let's go back in and change the pattern to image input, rotation to 90, input distribution to pattern number, symmetry random to 1, scale it down a little bit to add some space between each plank, and play around with the luminance random value. We can then add in a transform 2D node and scale it up just a bit to get rid of the black space. Now we can add an output node for the height, just set the identifier and label as planks, and then connect it. Since we'll be using a pixel processor later to add some variation to our wood direction, we need to have some flood fill data as an output. To do that, we can add some levels to our tile generator and crank up the values to white. Connect it to a flood fill node. Then connect that to a flood fill to random color node. Thing is, this isn't the result that we want. The reason it looks like this is because there's no gap separating the planks. To fix this, let's swap out the transform 2D with our tile generator. And now you can see it's fixed. But it still leaves the gap we had earlier, so let's just copy our transform 2D node, connect that, and then make an output for our flood fill. Add in a tile generator, set the pattern to disk, and scale it down. What we want here is for the bolts to be right in the middle and also adapt to the tiling of the planks without stretching. To fix that, set the size mode to keep ratio, and now when we set the y amount to 1 and adjust the x amount, there's no more stretching and it's right in the middle. Now we can add in two outputs for the hole and the nail. Add in a blur so that our hole has a bit of a bevel. Then, run it through levels and adjust the value so that it's a bit tighter, and that'll be our nails. The last thing we need to do here is to expose some parameters. Let's go to our tile generator, expose the x amount, just gonna name it planks amount, and then go to our bolts and set that to the same parameter we just exposed so that we can control both. Let's also expose the scale. And here I'll just name it bolt size. And we're pretty much done with the blanks. Now let's go back to the main graph and get started with the wood pattern. To recreate the wood pattern, let's break it down into shapes so we can wrap our heads around it easier. The first shape we have, these dark wavy lines. Next up are these thinner wavy lines. The third are these wood rings, and lastly, we have the wood greens. Back in designer, let's start with the dark wavy lines. Add in a tile generator, set the x amount to 2 and y amount to 4, set the shape to bell, interstice x to negative 3 and interstice y to 0 0.3. Position x random to 1, play around with the y value of global offset, and wire random to 2, or let's make it 2.5. And luminance random to around 0.3. Then let's rotate this using a transform 2D node. 
Just press and hold shift to snap the rotation to 90 degrees. We can then run this through a warp node and drive the effect using some Berlin noise. Set the scale down to 5 and we'll leave it as is for now. Let's move on over to making the thin wavy lines. Add in a gradient linear 1. Run it through a transform 2D node to stack them up like this. Use levels to tighten it. And then blend it using add linear dodge with our tile generator from earlier. We can use levels to control how much we erase some of these lines. Then we can use the transform 2D node to kind of squish them a little bit. Then use warp and our purlin noise from earlier to drive the effect. I want the warp to be a bit jaggier so let's use a safe transform grayscale node to scale this up. Now we can plug it in this node called Make It Tile Photo, and what this does is it's supposed to mask out the edges so that the inputs can tile better. We're going to be using this to add some randomness to the wavy lines that we have. To build upon that even more, we can blend two Transform 2D nodes where both are rotated 90 degrees, except the other one is tightened up a bit, and then blend that with our dark wavy shapes from earlier. We can use levels and invert it to have more of the bigger lines spread out like this. And then just to layer in a bit more detail, we can warp this again and for this, I'll be using some moisture noise to roughen these lines up a bit. Just can lower down the intensity like so, and add in a blur to soften it up a little bit. And now we can move on to the wood rings. To do the rings, we can use a little trick using the gradient map node. Let's add a transform 2D node, scale it up, and I'm just going to try and get these big shapes in the frame like this. Then we can hook that up to a gradient map node, click on gradient editor, and then click on this bar to add in some markers. Set the color of the left marker to black and the one on the right to white. Then just do this a couple more times and notice how we're essentially drawing rings on our shape here. The cool part about this method is you can just left click and drag the markers that you want to adjust in order to either make the spaces more prominent or tighten them up. Through the power of editing, we'll just skip ahead and now we have our rings. Don't forget to set the color mode to grayscale. And to finish off this wood pattern, let's do the wood grains. Bring in a directional noise 2D node, rotate, and use levels to even out the values. Then let's use the transform 2D node and squeeze it just a bit, and adjust the levels before blending them together using add sub. All that's left now is to tie them all together. Let's add in a warp and use our Perlin noise as the input. Duplicate the warp and run our thin wavy lines through it. Adjust the intensity and then blend them both using multiply. Then let's blend in our dark wavy lines. And finally, invert the values of our wood rings using levels and then blend them together using min darken. Now let's just organize and frame these up and we're done with our wood pattern. At this point, I usually select all the base procedural nodes and group them up somewhere so that I can easily find them and see if there's a node I can just reuse down the line. Let's move on to the planks. Left click and drag our planks graph into our main one. And as you can see, we have access to all our custom outputs from earlier. I want to rough up the planks a bit so let's take our planks and plug them inside the warp node and for the gradient input, let's use our directional noise 2 node. Lower down the intensity to about 0.001 and then blur it just a bit to soften the edges. Then let's blend it with our wood pattern using multiply and lower down the opacity to 0.5. Then let's use another blend. 
Connect her holes and set it to subtract. Add in one last blend and connect her nails using Max Lighten. We can add in a blur to bevel the nails and levels to even out the height. If you want to use more precise numbers for levels, you can click on this icon to switch the sliders and for this, I'll set it to 0 0.5. Let's plug it in our height and there we go. We have a big problem though. All we have right now is her wood pattern being overlaid on top of her planks. What we want is for the direction of the wood pattern to be different for each plank. To solve this, we'll be using a pixel processor. Add in a pixel processor, connect our wood pattern, and then click on edit. We can delete this and add in a sample color node and set this as our output. What this node contains is each pixel of our wood pattern. Let's add in the get float to node and under the drop down list, click on position and connect it. To illustrate how this is going to work, let's add another float to node and add it with our position. Now when we move the slider, it's moving the pixels left and right. We're going to be using the flood fill node we made earlier to drive the direction of the wood. Let's go back to our main graph and connect our flood fill node into input image 1. Now we can add in a sample color node and select our flood fill as the input. Let's get the position of the flood fill. And to turn this into numbers we can manipulate, we can use a swizzle flow 2 to separate the values into x and y. Now we're going to multiply the values from our flood fill with our flow 2 and then add that to our base color. So now when we change the x value of our flow 2 node, it's also changing the direction of our wood pattern based on each plank. Just gonna play around with the values until it looks good. Now all we have to do is set that to grayscale and replace the wood pattern in our blend node with this one. That takes care of the planks for now. Let's get our beveled planks, invert, and adjust using levels to mask out the gap between each plank. Then let's invert our wood pattern from the pixel processor. Another node we can use for this is the invert grayscale node. Blend those two together using add linear dodge and blend that with our holes. Then we can subtract using our nails. And we can add the Levels node here to have control over the roughness of the nails. Let's also multiply this with our Moisture Noise and use the Transform 2D node to modify it a bit and then lower the opacity. To finish up the roughness, we can plug in the Histogram Range node and then plug that into our Roughness input. The cool thing about this node is it can control how detailed our roughness is, and also how rough or shiny we can go. Just frame this up, and we're done with the roughness. Let's invert our initial roughness blend, plug it into a gradient map, and adjust the gradient until we get something that's close to black. Then run the nails through a gradient map and blend them. Now we can plug that into our base color input. For the rest of our maps, it's pretty straightforward from here. We can plug in our height map into an ambient occlusion node, adjust as needed, and then plug that into our ambient occlusion input. And for the metallic input, we can just plug in our nails. Joe's gonna do a quick fix here and change the blend mode for the base color from add linear dodge to max lighten. All we have to do now is to expose the parameters and optimize the graph. The first parameters that we're going to expose are the ones that we already made for our planks. Just click on this icon, expose this new graph input, and do the same for the bolt size. Now we're going to tweak some values. 
Double click on any empty part of the graph to go to the root, and here we can add some information about our material. You can go ahead and name it whatever you like. For me, I'll just name it dark wood blanks and set the category to wood. Here in our parameters, we have the values clamp using a min and max value. Let's play around with a default value and clamp as needed. In this case, I want the minimum amount of blanks to be 4 and the max amount to be 10 with the default value set to 5. For the bolt size, I don't want it to be bigger than the planks, but I'll set the max value to something like this. Not sure why anyone would ever set it this high, but you never know. I set the minimum to 0, which essentially removes the bolts. Next, let's expose the parameters inside our histogram range. I'm gonna change the name to roughness range and roughness amount. Do the same thing as earlier, just adjust the values based on what you think looks best. Next up is exposing our normal intensity. For the paint color, I opted not to expose it anymore since the only color they'll be using for the render anyway is black. And finally, expose the marker that controls the roughness of the nails. Now we're just going to optimize the graph real quick. In general, all I really do is look at nodes that I can lower the resolution for and organizing the graph so that it's easier to read or modify in the future. And that's it. We now have a finished material. To publish it as an SPSAR file, right click on the package and click on Publish SPSAR file. Here inside Substance Player, we can test out the material and it's looking good. And that's how I made the dark wood blanks for the Holiday Cabin project. If you learn anything or you'd like to see more in-depth videos like this, feel free to comment down below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, see you around.